So in an earlier set of videos, we talked about um, or we developed parameters to help us classify soils. Um, in this set of videos, we're going to round off that uh, theme of classification by talking about clay minerals. Now, clay minerals are used to uh, describe a size fraction in soil, as we've already discussed. Uh, anything under two micrometers we might describe as a clay. Quite confusingly, though, um, clay is also a term used to describe a range of minerals that exist within soil. So these things can be mutually exclusive. We can have particles um, uh, that are uh, not made up of clays um, be part of the clay size fraction, be under two micrometers. And we can also have an agglomeration of clay minerals that um, would apparently be greater than two micrometers. But usually in soils, the bulk of the clay size fraction is made up of clay minerals. So clay minerals are silicate minerals. Um, and that means that they're, they're based around this, um, this arrangement of atoms. Um, and the arrangement of atoms is called a silica tetrahedron, where we have um, four oxygen atoms surrounding a, a silicon atom. Um, so that's the, the, the building block of, of all silicate minerals. Um, and clay minerals form sheets of these, uh, these silica tetrahedra. So the, the sheets look something like this. If I look uh, from above down onto one of these sheets um, of silica tetrahedra, it look, the arrangement looks something like this, where we have individual uh, silica tetrahedron uh, joined together to other silica tetrahedron by uh, uh, their oxygen atoms. And in the middle of each of these, uh, these, uh, these triangles, uh, we'll have a silicon atom. So this is what it looks like uh, looking down onto it. So silicates that form sheets like this are given a special name called phyllosilicates. So this um, sheet arrangement of, of, in clays is really what drives some of the interesting properties that clay minerals have. Um, so you know, clays might be on, on the order of a micrometer in width or length. But actually, if you look at the thickness, um, that could be on the order of nanometers, so um, 100 or 1,000 times less. So you can imagine a, a, a sheet that's a, a thousand times wider or, or longer than it is thicker, and that's uh, that's really what we're talking about when we talk about clay minerals. So, in addition to um, layers of silica, clay minerals also have layers of alumina, um, and those layers are composed of uh, octahedra um, of alumina. Um, and what that is is you have six um, atoms, or well, six groups of, of hydroxyl surrounding an aluminium atom. And sometimes that, that, those hydroxyl groups are swapped with oxygen atoms when they're making up these sheets. But it looks something like this. Um, if I were to draw it as a, as a sheet, it's a little bit um, confusing, so I won't, won't attempt that. My, my skills are not aren't good enough. But um, the single um, arrangement looks something like this. Sometimes the aluminium atom is also replaced by magnesium as well. So the different arrangement of these sheets is really what uh, gives rise to the different range of clay minerals that we, we can have. Um, so for instance, uh, montmorillonite, um, which is a, it's part of the smectite group of clays, um, and it's sort of what makes up bentonite clay, um, has an arrangement that looks like, like this. So instead of drawing out all of the atoms, um, I've did it, just done it as a schematic where this blue trapezium uh, represents the silica layers. Um, and the red uh, um, cuboid represents the uh, alumina layers. So for Montmorillonite, the arrangement looks like this, where we have uh, essentially a silica layer, uh, alumina layers, a sandwich between two silica layers. So what joins these, uh, these layers together is um, the, 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 uh, the sharing of, of oxygen atoms. Um, or hydroxyl um, groups. So in um, smectite uh, clays like Montmorillonite, we have um, three layers, and they're joined to, get, um, to another three layers um, by an interstitial gap here. Now, inside that gap, you can have either uh, calcium. Oh, I'll do you a different. Pen. You can have calcium uh, atoms, uh, magnesium. Uh, sodium uh, or water. So the, the uh, expansive 
um, properties that smectite clays have, like montmorillonite, arise because of the, the relative size of the particle that fits in this in interstitial gap uh, relative to its charge. So um, magnesium and, and sodium um, atoms are relatively the same size, but magnesium has uh, two uh, charges for every one of sodium. And calcium is almost, well, twice the size of a magnesium atom. So, and water has a, a relatively low charge um, to the particle size, so you need a lot of water in there to, to, to meet, meet the charge requirements of the, of the, of the structure. So um, that's why when you, you add water to these, uh, these types of clays, you get um, expansive properties. So together, uh, the, these six layers make up one crystal of, of, um, of clay. Um, but the, the thickness of uh, one of these three layers is around, let's say, 10 angstroms. Now, one angstrom is equal to 0 0.1 nanometers. So uh, each layer is probably about one nanometer. Uh, each sort of set of layers is, is about one nanometer in thickness. So illite clay minerals have um, the same arrangement as montmorillonite, um, with three layers connected to another three layers. Um, but the difference here is that we, we now have really much larger potassium ions sitting in the, in the interstitial gap. So uh, potassium has a, a, a much larger diameter even, even than calcium, but it has only one charge. So that, they're now sitting in the interstitial gap. That's what gives rise to illite clay minerals. So the arrangement of sheets for uh, kaolinite is completely different from uh, illite or montmorillonite. Um, and the arrangement looks something like this, where we have sil alternating silica and alumina sheets. Um, and those are joined together um, mainly through hydrogen bonding. Um, but you'll notice that in this arrangement, we don't have the uh, interstitial zone anymore. And that's the reason why kaolinite has um, uh, uh, much less expansive properties than, um, than smectite type clays. So what governs this, uh, this structure uh, change in clay minerals is really the, the underlying need for, for minerals to maintain charge balance within the, within the structure. Um, and they have to maintain that charge balance with changes in, um, in, in, in element substitution. So. Um, for uh, some of the, the elites and, and montmorillonite type clays, the aluminium is replaced by, um, by magnesium, and you have a 3 plus charge being replaced by a 2 plus charge. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say we have kaolinite here, and we have a, a, maybe a typical chemical formula for kaolinite would be Si4, uh, Al4, O10, uh, OH8. Um, now let's count up all of the positive and negative charges within, within that. So silicon um, atoms by themselves have a, a 4 plus charge. So we have uh, 4 times 4, four plus charge. Uh, aluminium have a, uh, atoms have a 3 plus charge. So we have 4 times 3 plus. Um, and those two together give us, um, well here it's 16 positive charges. And here's 12 positive charges. Oxygen uh, has a negative, a two negative charge. So we have 10 times two negative. And the OH group uh, has a one uh, negative charge. So we have eight times uh, and one negative. So we have here 20 negative charges and eight negative charges. So if we add up all of those together, we actually get a zero uh, net of charge. And this would be the case for kaolinite, but what would happen if we swapped some of that aluminium for, um, for magnesium? Well, instead of uh, our magnesium or aluminium uh, three plus, we would go to magnesium two plus. Um, so if we swapped all of the, um, the, the aluminium in kaolinite to magnesium, we would uh, be left with um, well, here it would be three times, uh, four times two plus. So we'd be left with um, uh, eight positive. 
So we'd be left with an overall um, four, um, a surplus of four negative charges. Um, so to try and counteract that, the um, Illite and Montmorillonite rearrange their, um, their, their arrangement of, of sheets and, and, um, and crystal structures, um, and also include the, the interstitial cations, the positive cations, to counteract that, that excess negative charge. 